In today's tutorial, let's do the Lush Life Blanket. This is featuring Bernat Blanket, one of the most popular yarns that you'll see in the stores today. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Lush Life Blanket just like you see here. This is a really easy pattern and today I'm going to show you the secrets on how to be able to change the size. Of course if you change the size then you have to change the yarn quantities to match as well. You're going to need a size N 10 millimeter crochet hook today and if you want to do the blanket as you see here you're going to need three balls of two colors. So you're going to need three balls of this one here. This is silver steel. This is one of the most popular colors that are out there and then you're also going to need vintage white. So you need three balls of each in order to complete the size and this will give you approximately the size of 52 inches by 60 inches. So let me tell you the secrets on how to be able to change the size of this afghan. So if you'd like to change the size of this afghan it's all in the matter of the first row. Okay so it's it's about making the chain the right size and then doing the first row. So what you're going to notice here in this particular pattern I've drawn a really rough diagram in order to figure this out for myself is that we're going to have what is called front post trebles come down and come down two rows below and wrap around and this is what's creating the bump that comes out of the pattern. But what you're going to notice is that we're going to do then another single crochet row and the next time we do it it's going to be in between the other two bumps that you see. Okay, so what we have to keep in mind is that the starting row has to compensate in order to keep these bumps looking consistent and then the other bumps then looking like they're coming down. So the next time that we do the bumps after this is that they'll be back to where these ones are here down here. So there's a repeat pattern that is really quick and easy and it's just a matter of doing it. So what is the secret in order to change the size? You must keep these in groups of two. So when you go to crochet you can go one, two, one, two, one, two and once you're satisfied with the line length of the chain just add three at the end and this will give you an odd count of these posts that are in the first row in order to make this happen. If you end up with an even number like 10 or 12 or or whatever the it's it, whatever an even number is <laughs> then what's going to happen is that these uh, particular trebles here will not work because they, they will not sit properly in the pattern. So without further ado let's uh, grab our yarn. I'm going to be using a Bernat blanket today. I'm going to use a solid color in order to show you this technique. So let's begin and I'm going to create a slip knot and I'm using my size and 10 millimeter crochet hook today. So to do the size you can either just follow the directions of chaining 67 if you exactly want to meet what you want to see on the on the pattern or you can just do what I'm about to do. So I'm going to chain in sets of two. So remember the starting one never counts as one. So we have one and two and then one and two and when you get to the size length that you want one and two you can just stop. So one and two and one and two and one and two. So as I said in the in the intro there so we need to add an extra three at the very end of this in order to keep the balance. So once you're satisfied with the length and you've done your one, two, one, two, one, two just add three. So one, two and three and now you're good to go for row number one. So row number one we're going to count back to the fourth chain from the hook. So just look underneath. So one, two, three, go to the fourth, turn it around, get the back hump only of the stitch. Just wrap the hook and you're going to double crochet into that stitch only. Once you get to the back hump anyway it's going to turn the chain over so the rest of them will be exposed right in front of you. You're going to double crochet yourself across the chain into the back hump only. That is actually a technical word so some people think it's a fake word but uh, it is also called uh, what is it a back loop as well could be called that. I like calling it the hump because it's like the hump of a reptile if you're thinking about it from that perspective. So you're just going to double crochet yourself all the way across. Look how big this already is compared to my hand. So you can see an afghan of this size is going to go relatively quickly because it just whips up really cool. So continue to double crochet yourself all the way across your chain. So I'm all the way at the end of the chain. What I want you to do before you do anything further especially if you've altered the size of your pattern I want you to count these posts and remember to count this first chain one as a post as well and you should get an odd number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. So 13 is an odd number. If you have an even number you need to stop right now and just uh, correct, do a correction before you continue because this pattern will not work if you have an even number of these posts. Let's move up to row number two. Turning our work let's go for row number two. So we're just going to chain up one to begin and we're going to put one single crochet in each one of the double crochets going all the way across. 
So this single crochet row is every other row in this pattern. Okay, so rows number three and five are slightly different from each other but row number two which is this one is repeated between each one of them in order to give it distance in order to have that really cool look that you see in the pattern. So just single crochet yourself all the way across your chain or your row and I'll meet you at the end of this row which is just a few moments for me. I might as well stay leave the video on. Here we go and remember to get that very last chain. So I got two stitches left. Do not forget this final chain. A lot of people stop early so they end up with a triangle afghan. Just goes in the top of the chain. So don't go into a space. Go right into the top of the chain like so. If you go, if you go into the space right at the end what's gonna happen it's gonna leave a massive hole so make sure you go right into the chain itself. So let's turn and work and let's review number three and this is going to be repeated every time we're coming back to this particular row. So let's begin row number three. So the third row is going to repeat itself over and over and over but what we're gonna do is that we're gonna repeat row number uh, three or sorry two, three, four and five. Okay so this is number two here. So we're going to do number three now. So we're gonna chain up one or sorry chain up three which counts as a double crochet. Now we're going to start immediately and coming back down to the other double crochet. So skip right over this single crochet and you're going to do a front post treble. So to do a treble you wrap the hook twice and then coming into the side of the post over, wrap the hook, pull through, then wrap and pull through two, two and two and this is what gives it the big uh, uh, lump look. So you're going to skip that same stitch that's in behind which is right here and you're going to double crochet into the next one. Just like that. Okay, so we're going to do it again. So a front post treble, we're gonna skip the next double crochet down here and go to the next one over. So wrap the hook twice and you're going every other one if you can just remember to do that. So okay, so on the top here you're going to skip over the one that you would have went into and just double crochet into the next. So just remember that the front post treble crochet is blocking a certain view. So if you look at it from behind you can see that you skipped a stitch and skipped a stitch. So let's uh, do it again. So front post treble, so just wrap the hook twice, skip the next one, go to the second one over. And remember that is counting as that one in the back. So just skip that one and go to the next one over for a double crochet. Okay, and you're going to go all the way across using the same technique. It's just every other one is a front post treble. Okay. And you will get the hang of it really quick and you can see that this is gonna grow really quickly. So the trick to having it as being an odd number right in the beginning is that you need these to be sitting in the proper location. So you will notice that in row number three we the second one was the front post treble. So this means that the second one before the end will also be a front post treble and that's where that odd number comes into play. And the very final stitch is just a double crochet in the last single or in the last single crochet there. Okay, so you can see that these are sticking out and now continue to be in balance. This is what the back looks like, like that. So let's begin row number four. As promised, row number two is every other row. So if you look at row number four, it says as per row number two. So just turn our work and chain up one and it's just gonna be one single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way across. So this row is really, every other row is a no brainer for these single crochets. You can just whip along nicely and then we're gonna move up then to row number five. We're gonna change the location of where the front post trebles are for row number five before we start repeating the pattern all over again for going back to row number three. Okay, so you're just going single crochet all the way across. Do not forget that final chain. Okay, it's right there. Go right into a chain itself, not into a space and turn your work and let's do row number five. In row number five the front post trebles do not appear until after these front post trebles here. So it's gonna appear here. Okay, so it's not gonna be before, it's gonna be after and when we go to finish this one it'll be right here is gonna be the last one and then you'll have two double crochets. So let's do number five. So you're gonna chain up three which counts as a double crochet and you're going to double crochet into the next one. And if you look down it's right above that other front post treble. 
right here. Do you see it? How it's kind of aligning. So the next one is a front post treble around the next double crochet. Okay, so just come up and it just going down two rows. So one and two and there it is. And you're going to go in a front post treble. And it's just exactly what I taught you. So the next one, see if you follow up is the treble but this time it's a double crochet. So this is putting those trebles in between. So let's do the next treble. Okay and the next one is a double. So, so do you see that? So it started one more in than the other one here and you're gonna continue all the way across like that. So the last two stitches on this particular row will just be double crochets regular in order to keep the balance. I am going to review uh, step number three again uh, for you in order for you to see the consistency of this particular pattern. Okay, so I got three more stitches left. I just got one more treble, front post treble here. And I have two stitches left and the final two in this particular row are going to always be one double crochet each. Okay, so do you see the, the consistency of the pattern? So the front post treble started the third one in and it finishes the third one before the end. So let's turn our work and do row number two once again. So turning our work we're doing row number two all over again. Every other row is just chain one, single crochet into that stitch, into every stitch all the way across. So this is a repeating of row number two. So I wanna show you repeating row number three one more time just so that you understand the repeat pattern. You can see how fast that this particular afghan will grow. Obviously I have a small sample in my hand but you can see how much I've done already just in the short time I've been on camera with you. Don't forget the final one is into a chain. Okay. So let's move up and review number three. So turning our work. So this time do you see where these are down here where my thumb is? That's where it's gonna be up here. Okay, so it's just gonna follow up and then it's just gonna be in between the other trebles that you saw. So to begin again row number three just chain up three to start and the next one is a front post treble so just looking down two rows one and two and just wrap the hook twice and do a treble, front post treble. Okay and the next one then if you follow it up is just a double crochet. So this is now putting those trebles in between the other ones. Okay just straight down. See it's not a hard pattern at all. Okay and the next one is a double crochet. And if you've ever confused just look down to see what's going on in the pattern. So you can see now that you had these here and then the next row which was row number five it shifted over and then row number three it comes back. Just like there. Kind of reminds me of a conveyor belt kind of idea of how chains are, are put together in a conveyor belt. Okay so you're just gonna continue it along. Again I'm not really thinking too much about this to be honest with you. I'm just looking for the consistency of the pattern and just maintaining what's already there. So there's not a brain killer in this. Uh, I can see why it's easy because it really is easy. So the next row is going to be the same as row number two which is one single crochet into each. And then you're back to row number five again and again you're just gonna do exactly what you did over here. You're just gonna start one in. So the final stitch is just a double crochet. So if you can understand this pattern so you can see it just like here. I'm gonna put down the hook so I can hold it open for you. Okay so in the first one here we had the trebles all right and almost to the sides. It's just one left over and in row number five we were just we shifted over to the third one in on both sides and then we're back to number three coming back out again. So this is how you do the Lush Life Blanket. It's really quite easy. Uh, good luck with this pattern and until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.